Hey guys, just a quick video on the new Facebook cryptocurrency Libra. So what does this Libra thing, what does the Libra cryptocurrency tell us about the cryptocurrency market? Well, number one, it proves a point that I had made over a year ago in a few videos where I said that uh, people would not need to buy your Ethereum or your Bitcoin or your Litecoin to get into the cryptocurrency market because a lot of people were thinking that I'll buy Ethereum and I'll buy Bitcoin and part of the rationale of buying it was that well people are going to be using this stuff to uh, transact uh, and, and they were going to have to buy your Ethereum from you or we're going to have to buy your Bitcoin and I said there is no way that a company would buy your Ethereum coins at a thousand or ten thousand a coin whatever the number would be when they could just create their own coin. And here's the biggest proof yet, uh, besides the fact you have, you know, you had thousands of altcoin, altcoins out there. I don't know if there were thousands, could have been 500, who knows. But anyway, Facebook has got their Libra coin. They're building their own coin from scratch. And uh, there you go, Bob's your uncle. They don't need your Bitcoin. They don't need your um, Ethereum. That said, the next point I want to make is when the cryptos started hitting the market in a big way. The authorities decided to classify cryptocurrencies as uh, commodities, just like you have gold, silver, copper, oil. And I think that was a proper classification because a currency, one of the functions of currency is to allow for an exchange of goods. I want to buy a hot dog. I want to buy a chair, whatever it is. I want to buy a camera. I need a currency. Now, a currency has to have a stable value. The problem with Bitcoin and Ethereum and Litecoin is the values would fluctuate so much. So, you know, if I bought a hamburger from you and with uh, three Litecoins and, you know, that was, you know, and then the next day, three Litecoins were worth half as much, you're in trouble as a vendor, right? So that... Uh, the traditional, we'll call them traditional cryptos that people were trading in, they, can't, they couldn't be proper currencies because they were too volatile. And then people say, well, they're going to stabilize, they're going to stabilize. Well, they haven't stabilized much after seven years, right? Um, so anyway, back to the uh, Libra thing. It shows that Facebook is not just creating their own cryptocurrency. As I said many times in the videos, the blockchain technology will have its use. But it's, it was going to be, uh, they were going to create their own. People were going to roll out their own. I, w I wasn't expecting Facebook to do it. I thought some major bank would do it. But with the Libra project, with the Libra cryptocurrency, Facebook is going to be partnering with PayPal and, uh, and uh, Uber and a whole bunch of other companies, MasterCard, Visa. So it's going to happen. Now, the big difference between the Libra model versus the other cryptocurrencies is that uh, Libra is centralized. PayPal is going to handle everything. And Libra's value is going to be uh, backed by, I think, a, a pool of currencies, like the euro, the yen, the dollar, maybe others. I'm not sure what the details are on that. So that's a big difference. So it's centralized in terms of you have Facebook managing that whole thing, for better or for worse. And on the other hand, philosophically, philosophically speaking, with Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and so many others, it's decentralized. So uh, there's a philosophical difference in terms of, uh, you know, the pros and cons of each, et cetera, et cetera. So what Libra teaches us about the cryptocurrency market is that the traditional coins, the Bitcoin, Litecoin, et cetera, they are commodities, not so much currencies, because people trade them quite a bit. Uh, the values go up and down. And they're not currencies because these, these, uh, these coins are not actually used much in real world transactions. So I saw a study in the last year, I think less than 2% of the exchange of Bitcoin was in actual transactions to buy and sell things. They weren't, they're mostly, the, the movement of the coins are, is mostly for trading purposes. It's for gambling. It's for trading. It's for gambling. Trading is a, is a Wall Street's word for gambling. Anyway, that's the story. So can you make money trading cryptos? Yeah, tons of people do. Most lose. 
And I say that not because I'm disparaging of cryptocurrency markets, not at all. Most people lose, most traders lose if they buy into the uh, stock market. The, you know, somebody said to me uh, about the stock market, it's not about uh, timing the market, it's about the time in the market. Basically, people who make money in the stock market, people who buy in and just forget about it, they buy the indexes, they forget about it, and 10 years later, five years later, 20 years later, overall, they make a lot of money, generally speaking as opposed to trying to jump in and out, trying to jump in and out, trying to jump in and out. I've done that mistake in the past. It's cost me huge sums of money to do that. If I would have just held positions, as opposed to say, trying to make a quick buck, all right, I made 30% in two months, I'm a genius. But if I would have waited another four or five years, I'd be up five, 600%. This has happened to me several times. So there you go, off on my little tangents again. That's it.